Welcome back to the vlog today. I'm doing a $300 buy-in at the 1-3 game, and the first hand I pick up is Pocket Deuces in the big blind. The other gun player is the first to open the action. He makes it 15. The middle position player calls. I'm going to defend. $12 more to go. 46 in the pot, and the flop comes out 393. Not a terrible flop for Deuces. It's a static board with low cards. My hand could be in the lead right now, but I'm going to check it to the original better. The other gun player, and he continues to bet. He makes it 15 again. The middle position player folds. I'm going to make the call. See the turn. It's a seven of clubs, another good card for me to see. Remember, the under the gun player opened the action from a terrible position, but when he checks back to me on the turn, I'm thinking that my hand still could be in the lead. We go to the river, it's the seven of hearts. Now I'm in big trouble. My twos have been completely counterfeited. There's no way I'm taking this hand down without betting, and betting is what I do. I make it 40. My opponent thinks, but doesn't think long before he says he's donating to me. He makes the call and flips over ace king. I did have him the whole way until the river came, and of course I did have to push him off. I gave it my best shot. Maybe a $60 bet would have gotten the job done. I lost $70 on that hand, so I'm rebuying from $230 back to $300 in for $370. And the next hand I pick up, it's King-10 offsuit on the button. I've straddled this pot. The middle position player limps. The hijack limps as well. The small blind and big blind defend. And now I have a decision to make. I have the best position. There's a lot of dead money, a lot of limpers. Obviously, no one has a very strong hand, or they would have put in a bet. King-10 offsuit in my opinion, is a terrible hand that should never be willingly played, except for positions like this, I guess. I put myself into this nasty position by straddling. Now I'm inclined to play a hand that I wouldn't typically play. Since it's straddled, I have to put in a decent-sized bet. I make it 40. 40 might not be enough, maybe 50 or 60, but remember, my hand's king-10 offsuit, so I'm not really thrilled about putting money in to begin with, but I do have a pretty strong hand on the button. The only player that calls is a small blind. This is a heads up versus a blind with position. It's the perfect situation to be in. I think this was probably the right move. The question is, can I navigate the flop turn and river in order to take down the pot? The flop comes out three queen deuce. No good for me. The small blind checks to me. I'm going to go ahead and check back. I have some showdown value. I might still be in the lead. Remember, he is the small blind. The turn is a nine of hearts. I don't hold a heart, but I now hold a gut shot straight draw. And when it checks to me, I think this card is worth a bet. The heart is scary, plus I have some equity that's developed. I make it 30. The small blind doesn't let me take down the pot right then and there, though he makes the call. We're going to the river. It's a seven of clubs, a complete blank. I'm sitting with king high. And this time, the small blind leads into me for 30. Very weird line to take the aggression on the river. I gave them the opportunity to check raise me on the turn, and he didn't take it. The seven brings in absolutely no draws. I see this as a simple blocker bet, trying to prevent me from taking the aggression. I'm not going to fall for it. As a matter of fact, I'm going to push back. I make it 130. He could possibly be blocking with a pair of nines or threes. I think he could fold a lot of these hands. I don't see him holding many queens. He could easily have a hand like Jack-10 with one heart. He decides it's not worth the hassle. He makes the fold. I'm scooping a second pot of the night with a bluff up to 428. Taking a split second to like this video would really help support the channel. Let's get back to the action. And the next hand I pick up is King-Queen offsuit in middle position. Action folds around to me. I put in a bet to 13. The middle position player calls. The low jack calls. So does the high jack. We're headed four ways to the flop. $56 in the pot. And the dealer puts out 10, 9, 3. Once again, a gut shot to the jack. I decided to check, and the high jack decides to bet. He makes it 25. With two overs, a gut shot, and a decent backdoor flush draw, I'm going to make the call. The turn is the five of spades, bringing in one more spade. I'm not drawing to the third nuts. It checks through to the river, which is the 10 of hearts. Once again, I'm sitting with king high. I checked my opponent who grabs some chips, goes to slide him in, and I just decide to muck before he even makes a bet. There's no way I'm going to stick around for this one. Off to the next hand, 390 in my stack, and I pick up a suited king this time, king nine of spades, under the gun. I'm going to open up the action. This is right on the line. I think there is even a case for folding this here, especially if you're not very comfortable playing out of position or you just don't want to bother with it, mess with the hassle. I'm getting more and more to the position where it's not even worth it. Just fold away everything from early position. You're going to make so much more money from middle and especially late position. The only player that wants to call is the button, and this is my point exactly. Now I'm playing out of position for the rest of the hand with a hand that's good but not great. We're going heads up to the flop, 34 in the pot, and it comes out 7-8 deuce. I hit my flush draw, and I have a backdoor straight draw. I'm going to continue betting. I make it 25. The button's okay with that bet size. He throws in five reds. We're continuing on to the turn. It's the jack of spades. There it is, baby. I connect. Second nut flush. Now it's just about piling money in the pot. He was willing to call three-fourths size of the pot on the flop. Let's try three-fourths size of the pot on the turn. I make it 70. The button player, like a gentleman, grabs his dueling pistol from the box, takes 10 steps back, turns around, and fires 170 into the pot. There's no way I'm going anywhere with my second nut flush. 
It's all about just shipping it all in and shipping it in is what I do. I have him covered. He immediately puts in the rest of his stack. 606 in the pot. We're going to the river. I'm just hoping that he doesn't have the nut flush. The river comes out the two of clubs, pairing the board. The exact opposite of what I want to see. I wanted to see the ace of spades. My opponent sheepishly grabs his cards, says he has two pairs. That's good enough for me to flip mine over. I'm not going to be the Debbie Downer at this table. My flush is good, and I'm scooping a big one. 695 in my stack. My army is growing. I've added another company to the battalion. I pick up ace, queen, offsuit in middle position, opening the action of 15. The small blind makes the call. The big blind defends as well. 45 in the pot, and the flop comes out 10-4 deuce. I'm not working with much, but neither is anyone else. It checks through. And the turn is the three of spades. Now I've picked up a straight draw to the five. The small blind bets 16. And with my overs and my newly added equity, I make the call. My hand could be best right now. The river comes out the two of hearts. The small blind bets once again 44. And I have no choice but to make the fold. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Make sure to subscribe and join the family. Join the fun. A lot of great content coming up, especially with the WSOP on the way. I go through a little dry spell, have to toss away a few hands. And then the next hand I pick up worth playing is King Jack in the big blind. The middle position player min raises to six. The low jack calls. The cutoff makes the call. I'm just going to defend. No reason to inflate the pot with a marginal hand from the worst position, but I can definitely see the flop. And the flop comes out. Eight jack, three top pair, second best kicker. The middle position player checks. The low jack bets 10. I'm going to put in a raise, try to thin the field and charge all the draws. I make it 30. And then the middle position check raises to 70. I played with this middle position player enough to know that he's not check raising often. May not even be check raising a lot of his draws here. He doesn't have very much money behind. I decide I'm just going to let this one go. It turns out to be the right decision. He flips over pocket aces. This shows you the importance of paying attention to your opponents in a vacuum. I would have made the call. But in this specific situation at this perfect moment, I knew that the fold was correct. And it was correct. The next time I pick up is Jack, eight of clubs in the cutoff. Seeing that I have great position. And there's only the middle position limper. I'm going to open it to 16. The small blind defends. The big blind does as well. The middle position is going to commit 13 more to see the flop. Four-way action, and it's queen, six, king, four clubs. Backdoor straight possibility. The small blind leads out, and he leads out big over a pot size bet of $88. He's got about the same amount behind. It folds around to me. If I had jack, nine of clubs, I would probably call. Or if I had an over or two to go with my flush draw, I might make the call. In this particular situation, with such little money to be won, even if I hit my flush, I'm going to make the fold. I may be playing a little cautious, but in a cash game, there's no rush. There's no hurry. There's always going to be a next hand. And the next hand I pick up is ace-queen offsuit in middle position. I'm going to open with three reds, 15 to go. The hijack makes the call. So does the cutoff. The small blind defends four-way action, 63 in the pot, and the flop comes out 4-4 four, four jack. Going through a little bit of a dry spell here, not connecting with any of the boards. The flop checks through. The turn comes the five of hearts. Once again, doesn't get me any closer to victory. I'm going to take a small stab at it, though. I make it 15, and the cutoff immediately puts in a bet to 45. I toss my hand away, taking another loss, 572 in my stack. And I pick up a suited ace, ace, eight of hearts. There's another gun straddle in the pot. The hijack limps. I'm just going to see the flop. And it comes out three, two, six, no hearts, backdoor draws only. The flop checks through. And the turn is the ace of spades. I love to see it. I wish my kicker was better. The hijack bets 10. I'm not too interested in this pot. I had written it off on the flop. And now if I get to showdown and win, that'll be good enough for me. I make the call. The river is the ace of clubs. It's great seeing that ace. Makes me feel like my hand has gotten better, but has it really gotten better? Any ace still beats me. So I check to the hijack, and when he bets 20, I'm just going to make the passive conservative call. And it turns out to be the right play because he flips over ace-queen, had me, and he couldn't melt me for a lot more if I would have gotten greedy. Luckily, I didn't. This next Wednesday, August 11th, I'm going to be going back to Round Rock, Texas to the Lodge for redemption on the live stream. Make sure you tune in on their YouTube channel. My chip stack is just dwindling, 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 down to 4. 83 and I pick up pocket nines under the gun finally a playable hand I open the action of 15 the cutoff makes the call so does the button we're going to the flop and it's queen jack jack once again just a complete blank it checks through to the turn and it's an upside down nine the six of clubs I love to take stabs at pots when the opportunity arises the cutoff makes the call though slowing me down the river is a ton of hearts I checked the cutoff hoping to get to showdown but he jams 125 into the middle of the pot he probably hit his flush maybe he has a full house I don't really care I toss my hand away and he ends up showing a monster queen jack for the flop full house. A nine on the turn would have been a disaster. Down to 464. And I pick up another pocket pair. Just a little bit better than the nines. I get pocket tens in the small blind. The low jack opens to 10. The button makes the call. I have a strong hand with relatively poor playability post flop and terrible position. I need to raise the pot to protect my hand. I make it 40. I wish I would have made it 50 or 60. 
The low jack makes the call. So does the button. 123 in the pot and the flop comes out. 10-7 deuce finally connecting. Top set on the board. I do have to be wary of straight and flush draws out there. I'm going to go ahead and continue betting. I make a small, small bet. The low jack wants to spar. He makes the call. 173 in the pot. And we go to the turn. It's the ace of spades. A beautiful card. Hopefully, my opponent connects with the ace. Floated with an ace king, possibly. I'm going to go ahead and stick with a small sizing. This is a little tricky, a little dangerous. I'm trying to induce. But maybe it would be better if I put the pressure on all the draws and made a much bigger bet. It doesn't matter, though, because the low jack ships his whole stack in 145. I make the quick call. We're going to the river. It's the nine of hearts. And my opponent flips up. A set as well. He flopped a set. Mine was better. And I'm scooping a big one. 717 after being patient for such a long time. Once again, going through a dry spell. Not much else comes my way. I start to realize that this wasn't my session. I was just saved by a beautiful hand. And I need to get up from the table and turn my chips into cold hard cash. Take a profit for the day. I'm in for 370. Out for 735 for a profit of $347. Thank you so much for watching. Kato out.